I'm Richard, a portrait photographer, and today I'm reviewing the GF 23mm f4. Now, I am actually reviewing the 23 f4, and you may be wondering what has a portrait photographer got to do with the lens, and I can honestly tell you nothing. Uh, I got this lens purely for a certain purpose, and I will talk about it. I'm Richard and you know I'm going to review this GF 23mm f4 lens for the Fujifilm GFX system. Now obviously as I said earlier the GF 23mm is definitely not a portrait lens. It should not be purchased as one as such. It is a landscape lens and it will remain a landscape lens. It is really really wide, uh, equivalent right wideness of like 19mm and really unless you use landscape a lot, I would recommend you not to get it because it's really expensive. It is 2600 USD today. And now the question is, why do I own such a lens? Okay, I will tell you for two reasons. Firstly, I should cosplay and occasionally I need that ultra wide angle look for the action shots. And uh, you know, the 25mm out of the 32mm64, which is 25mm equivalent, is actually good enough most of the time. But now and then, I just want a little wider, a little bit more dramatic, and that is one reason. The next reason is, uh, which is actually the reason why I actually got it, was it's an impulse buy. It was really, really affordable. I went through one of my secondhand shops in like Peninsula, and I managed to get this at like 1.6k USD or 1.5k USD. I remember it was, it was really a discount of nearly 40% of its market value. It is really, really affordable because this lens brand new is 2.6K or 2.7K USD. And I got it like 1.6K, 1.5K and it was only a 10 months old lens then. So it was a pure impulse buy. But even till today, I don't really regret it. It's just that I don't really use it much. In fact, when I purchased this, I was about to go for a Japan trip and supposed to bring this lens along. But in the end, I choose to use the 3264 for its you know flexibility. But enough talk. Let's talk about this lens itself. Now, with my review, I'll split into three parts, the build quality, autofocus, and image quality, followed by some thoughts. Today's review will be quite short. So let's talk about its build quality, and build quality is really simple. For build quality itself, this lens is built like every other GFX lens. So let me put it here and show you. So it is a pure metal build, a rather stouty lens if you ask me, not really tall, but it has a very big front element. This is 82mm. And with it, you can see like two rings. This is the focusing ring, and this is the aperture ring. Now, the lens itself is weather sealed, so it does have its uh, sealing gaskets at the back. Overall, very nice build quality. Now, with every GF lens, I will tell you that the focusing ring itself is just really smooth with no hard ends because this is a focus by wire lens. You don't really expect it to stop in any ways, so you have to look at the screen behind to know what are you doing and where are you focusing at. Uh, not really a nicest feeling if you ask me. Now, the aperture ring on the other hand I will tell you that this 23mm is uh, not too new, not too old lens, but I felt that it is still really, really, I would say, as smooth and light on the touch. So it is quite easy to knock it off uh, any aperture you want. So the aperture ring, like with most, most GF lens, only locks at A and C. If you notice now, I'm locking and cannot turn it. But anything else is just free turning. So if you put it at F4, F5.6, you got a good chance to knock it off the aperture easily. If you ask me and you are a landscape photographer, I recommend you put a C and then set it manually in the camera itself. If not, always check before you shoot because this one is not really, really tight if you ask me. So the next thing we are talking about is handling and autofocus. Now, this lens, as you can see, is a very stouty lens. It is quite short, you no, know, but it's not really light. It is 850 gram. But because it's short, it doesn't really create any unbalance. As you can see, I'm holding with one hand, I'm turning around. It feels okay, not too bad. So overall, if you ask me in terms of handling, it is pretty much okay. Uh, probably a GFX 100 weighs way more, especially with this L bracket. This whole setup, I believe, weighs like, what, 2.7 kg? Really heavy of a setup. I recommend you never to do this outfield unless you want to train some biceps. Now, for the lens autofocus itself, there is nothing much to talk about. It is a LM lens, linear moto, which is the high speed moto for the Fujifilm system. If you see LM in the name, normally it means high speed and it doesn't create much noise. You can hear this floating tick, 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 tick effect, but other than that, it's okay. Now, this is an ultra wide angle lens. It is a 19mm equivalent in full frame or 23mm for the GF series. So anything like 50 meter, 60 meter is infinity. So there is nothing much to focus. It is almost instantaneous. It locks from close to far, close to far, as fast as it gets because there is nothing much to move. So pretty much I have nothing much to say about its autofocus. Extremely quick and with an LM motor, 
insanely quick for an ultra wide angle lens. And uh, there's one thing I touch as we've always, uh, there's one thing I touch about autofocus. And I would say that this lens autofocus is very accurate in good light. Uh, I've done a few portraits and I'll talk about it in image quality. Uh, it is always tech sharp on the area of focus. So overall, I think this lens autofocus is quick, it's accurate. And, you know, in terms of handling, perfectly balanced on the GFX 100, pretty balanced on the GFX 50. So the last one we'll talk about is image quality. And image quality for this lens, now, just a note, I'm a portrait photographer. I rarely use this lens for landscape. In fact, when I purchased this lens, I want to bring it in Japan. But in there, I still brought the 3264 for its flexibility, as I said earlier. So I hardly use it for landscape itself. In fact, I don't have any landscape shot to show you. Really, really sad for this 23mm of an impulse buy. In terms of image quality, as a portrait photographer, you can only shoot, if you put in a 9 square region, you can only shoot in the center square. If you try to shoot a 23mm out of the center square, you will get a lot of perspective stretching, perspective distortion, which is really, really ugly. So, all my shots are always shot with the person's head somewhere in the center square, as you can see in the few shots here. Unless you are going to make the person tall or you want to stretch the action out, make it a bit more dramatic, yes, you can go in many angles, but if not, the head of the person must be in the center. And as sharpness goes, as image correction goes, as CA goes, it is fantastically good. If I zoom in all the way, you can see you can count the individual lashes. You can't see any CA. It is really, really clean. It is one of the cleanest lens, cleanest ultra wide angle lens you can get in the market. Probably, I think there is no ultra wide angle lens that is as clean as it, at least when it comes to chromatic aberrations and overall sharpness. Really, really good lens in the center region and also near the edge a little bit. Now, at the edge itself, of course, you suffer from perspective distortion. So if you don't use this properly level, you will get really weird stretching as you can see in the shots here. But in terms of sharpness, it is really good. As you can see in this photo here, I zoom in 100% at the corner. It's still sharp. It's just stretched because of perspective distortion, which is pretty okay if you ask me because this is a 19mm equivalent lens. Now, if you properly level it, you probably maximize the image quality. But as a portrait photographer, I will tell you that at least from image quality point of view, compared to other GFX lens, it is as good as you get. And in fact, the corner actually doesn't have much CA. I tried, you know, shooting the corner into bright light. It is pretty okay. And that's about it for my review, at least when it comes to image quality. So my final thoughts in conclusion, I'll tell you that as a portrait photographer, do not waste your money buying this lens because yes, it will serve a few purpose, but you will probably never use it again. It is just such a hard to use angle, a 19mm. It is really, really too specialized. Now, as a landscape photographer, you'll probably gain a lot from it because it is really sharp. From my test, I noticed there's no chromatic aberrations, uh, at least significant ones. And you know, there is no weird distortion, those wavy distortions, they are hard to correct. So overall, I think if you are a landscape photographer, this is a fantastic lens. And it's weather sealed, so you can probably use it under the rain, under the sun, get the shot you want easily with this lens itself. Now, Back, back to being a portrait photographer, I'll tell you that, you know, I got it because it is really, you know, affordable then. I'll say it's not cheap, but it's definitely affordable. With a discount of nearly 40-40% off its base price, I really can't convince myself not to get it. It was so impulsive of a buy. Now, if you are a photographer and you manage to see one at 1.5k, 1.4k, sure, grab it because you probably can resell it and, you know, get some quick buck out of it. But if not, right? But if not, you know, don't buy this lens unless you are really, really into ultra wide angle and really into landscape or some sort of architecture shot or maybe indoor interior will probably benefit from this lens. Now, a lot of my friends are not too keen on buying this lens because they are waiting for a TSE, a tilt shift. Because this lens, they say that, you know, you can't tilt it and stuff and maybe it's not really useful for them. Overall, I think that this is the only ultra wide angle lens today for the Fujifilm GFX system. And if you need one, just get it. But if you don't need one, just wait for it because you no know, GFX and Fujifilm just say that they may launch a TS, a tilt shift version in the future. So I do not know. Maybe till then, you can get it then. And that's about it for today's review. And if you think my video is useful, do press the like button. And if not, if you think I'm talking crap, press the uh, dislike button. And subscribe if you want to see more. If not, I will see you next time in my next video. Bye-bye.